Hi, Megan. How are you? Hey, Sarah. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to be here and doing this. You know, I had a completely different check-in for this episode up until yesterday, but <laughs> can we just talk about how we're in an Instagram timeout right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we are uh, learning along the way here what the uh, boundaries are, what we're allowed to do and not do. <laughs> I know. And maybe we're breaking stuff along the way. Um, oh my God, yeah. I know. So for <laughs> everyone listening, Megan and I, we've both been really private personally on social media. Just that's the nature of who we are. I mean, I think I have like a couple hundred Instagram followers who are legitimate people I know. And I post photos of my kids and my account's private. <laughs> and you're right. kind of the same. Yes. And so, of course, like with this business and the podcast, we have to have a public Instagram and we're so excited about it. And I'm teaching myself Canva. And we brought on a new team member, which, yay, we're growing. Yay. I know. Welcome, Katie. Welcome, we're so excited Katie. you're along for the ride. We are so excited to have you. We need you. <laughs> so she's yes. going to help us out with things. And we thought, oh, what better way to have her help out than like, let's let her help us with Instagram because we're not great at it. <laughs> and we really need the help. So... Oh, the last couple of days, we were all three getting on Instagram and we thought, well, let's just comment and like on all the things we like on there and get our name really out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> yesterday, poor Katie got a message that said, you are locked out of your account. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh no, what happened? And so then I went in because I was the one who had set up the account. And the good news was that we were doing such a a good job. Instagram sent us a message that they thought we had hired a company <gasps> to. They, yes. I didn't know that they sent you that message. I thought that was what you just assumed that they thought. Oh, that's hysterical. No. So they thought oh we had God. hired somebody? Yes. Let me read it. I have it right here. <laughs> it says, this account has been temporarily blocked from taking this action because you shared your account information with a service that helps you get more likes or followers it goes against our community guidelines this block will expire oh. on 526 so oh my we, gosh we were commenting and liking so much between the three of us because we were like trying to figure this out <laughs> that they thought yeah. we hired a company well i didn't even know that was an option first of all <laughs> I didn't either. And I thought the more active we were, the better. But I guess too active is not good either. So I we'll know. figure this out. We'll figure out. And I think <laughs> if there's anyone out there that's listening and you're like really good at social media or you have any advice, yeah. please <laughs> send please it our way. Oh yeah. Like message us because we don't know we don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> uh. No, um, no, we don't. And along those we're lines, we're just gonna wing it and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> and if you're not following <laughs> us, please follow us because now for one week we can't like or comment on anything. So we might like your photo, oh, but we can't take yeah. any action on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wah, wah. That's too I bad. Know. Live um, and learn. Yeah, and. Just to remind everybody, the Instagram, which we just went live with, is Platinum Perspective Podcast. Yes, that's right. right? And well, yep, it's, yeah. link, it's linked within our show. Um, yeah, and it needs all the help it can get. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, what's going on with you, Megan? Um, my check-in is... Um, product related. So I thought because we were talking about beauty today, I thought I'll preface this talk a little bit with about products that I'm trying out with my kids. Um, and so I just wanted to run it by you and tell you what I've found. So um, so I have started changing up all of our shampoos and conditioners. Like I, after that clean episode we just had, um, I thought to myself, I need to sort of try some new stuff, some new products. And so I have been using... Tot Logic for my yes. kids. And do you use this too? I do use that. Yep. And it, it comes yeah. in two, it comes in two um, scents. And one of them is yes. lavender. 
So I see you have the other one. You don't have lavender. But if you have little girls, don't use the lavender because lavender can um, can affect the hormones and little girls. But that one you're using is a great one. I didn't know that. Okay, I, well, that's good. Okay, well, we I, learned I bought that from this our one I just don't like the smell of lavender. Yeah. D- Ooh, did you try it? Okay, Do you like you know. it? Yes, I like it. It's like a clean shampoo. Like it smells and feels very clean, like a real just like soap. Yes. Um, and then I've been interchanging it with this. And I actually tried this on Ooh. myself. This is Attitude Natural Care Super Leaf Science. So if um, the website that we've been looking at for a lot of our research is the Environmental Working Group, EWG. And they have products that are recommended based on having like no toxins at all. And this is one of them. Um, and so they have different scents. This one is Super Leaves Science, and um, it's it's really great. It's really moisturizing. Um, it's fantastic for the kids, and it comes with a shampoo and a conditioner. For me and and our more processed hair, um, it dried me out. So I wouldn't recommend oh. it for people who have like blonde hair or who have dyed their hair, have chemicals in their hair. It might be a little too drying. But for my kids, it's been great. The other thing is that we've started swimming in the pool recently, and um, I think I might have showed you this week. Yeah. Their hair turned really lime green with just one swim, and I talked to our our, um, pool people about what chemicals they might have put in recently that are different, and they said they did add something called Pool RX, which is for like, I don't know, killing algae. Um, but the byproduct of it is a lot of copper and that copper, because we were heating up the pool, we're in California and it's still cold. So we have to do this and it turned the copper, I guess it made it more active and it like binded to their hair. And so that's actually why their hair turned so green. Yeah. So it was really bad. Um, so are you going to admit using that? Yes. Uh, yeah. I had my husband take it right out. It's like this like gooey blue stuff. So I had him take it out right away. And so it stopped doing whatever it was going to do. But then um, my hairdresser recommended this stuff. It's Swimmers Wellness Shampoo by Malibu. And it has a shampoo and conditioner. And this fixed it. it and did. I've tried so many. Wow. Sh- yes. It, I mean, it cut the green at least in half. I'll do it again in like a couple days because I think it's supposed to be pretty caustic like it's it's kind of rough on the hair but in my experience actually their hair turned so straw like after that one swim that even just using this like brought back a lot of that moisture and that softness in their hair so thank you to my hairdresser (sighs) for recommending this it works great joanna um is my hairdresser she's the one who recommended this and it's it works fantastic it's probably the best one i've ever used and i've i've always had a pool in my backyard so um i'm happy to finally find one that works for green blonde hair yes that's Um, great that happens to us every year too we haven't gone swimming yet this season um but i'm gonna check in with our pool guy and make sure we're not using that ingredient either um interesting yeah it was <sighs> bad they, they said usually they put this in and people don't swim for a while but uh, we have a very active family and we needed we needed to get outside and do something so <laughs> the pool um and so yeah we unfortunately got like exposed to whatever those chemicals are but whatever oh, this gosh. works to fix their hair up and luckily my hair didn't touch it because otherwise oh, that thank goodness been big, <laughs> expense know, no good yeah big expense right <laughs> Oh, well, that's good. I know. I was so happy to find, like, clean shampoos. And actually, the swimmers one, usually these have a lot of toxins in them Mm -hmm. because they're, I mean, they're really chemical. Um, This one doesn't. This one, I looked it up, and it doesn't have any parabens, any sulfates. Um, It seems pretty healthy. It's not on the EWG, Environmental Working Group, website, so I can't really check and see what they give it a rating as. But from my research, it seems like it's actually a really clean option, so... That's good to know. And I love that you're referencing the EWG website. So that website, we've linked it once on Instagram, and I'm going to put it on there again. They have a app that you can download, and it's pretty amazing. You can put in any product, and it'll give it a rating on the toxin level. And uh, because it's still fairly new, not every product is on there. But I was searching for various mascaras, and what was great was the one I was looking for didn't come up. But like you were saying for recommendations, there were all of these new ones that you could recommend uh, that they – 
that they were recommending, and a lot of them were approved by that website as fully clean products, which is great to see. And did you recognize some of the brands? Yeah, Beauty Counter was one of them, which I don't try a lot of their products because they kind of do that multi-level marketing type of sales, but it was nice to see them and it kind of made me think like, oh, maybe I'll try some of their products. Um, Yeah, and some other brands as well, but we'll link uh, the EWG website on our Instagram and then you can download the app and as you're shopping, shop through the app um, or research through the app and it's, it's great information to have. It is, yes. And um, we are also making an Amazon store, um, and we will be doing all that research for you. So yeah, if you go to our, as soon as it drops, you'll find out on Instagram. Um, But we'll be doing all that research for you and recommending clean, good products, because we Mm -hmm. don't just want them to be clean. We want them to actually work. And so we're trying all this stuff ourselves, doing a lot of research behind the scenes just to try all of this and see which ones are the best. So yeah. We'll come back with some we're, good recommendations. That are yes, clean and we're and healthy. Ex- excited for this drop. Um, it's it's a lot of behind the scenes work, and and uh, <laughs> we're doing all of our due diligence, and we're gonna get a lot of amazing products linked through there. So as soon as that is ready, this episode specifically, we're gonna talk about a lot of products, and I will uh, highlight some of those products on Instagram. But as soon as that Amazon page is ready, we're going to link it and it's going to have a lot of these products within there. So it should be just really easy to go in and grab what we're talking about if you're interested in it. All right. So should we get into what today's episode is? Well, first, welcome, of course, to Platinum Perspective. This is the podcast about beauty, travel, luxury, and more. I'm your co-host, Sarah. And I'm Megan. Sarah and I are best friends who put the work in to get the most out of life so you don't have to. Today, we are going to be doing a very exciting episode on questions and answers that we are going to give to our expert in beauty, Miss Sarah. <laughs> um, I have I have absolutely loved, of course, being your best friend. Like it's so much fun, and you're just this treasure trove of amazing advice, um, and your knowledge is so deep in this area. Um, I just. I have loved getting all the advice I've gotten from you, so I'm really excited to get some more today (laughs) and to share it with our listeners. It's, I mean, it's so wonderful to have somebody who has a platinum perspective and a deep, rich knowledge on a a topic like this. Um, And for you to share that with us, we're just, I'm so excited to hear um, hear more about all of these beauty products and what you're using, Aww. what you're doing. Thank um, you. I love somebody who wants to learn yeah. about it because I want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Well, that's why we're best friends. Um, yeah. So I was, <laughs> I was thinking um, before we dive into all of our questions, um, I was wondering if you wanted to just tell us about your education and your career background in the beauty industry. Oh, sure. Of course. Um, Yeah. So I have always, since I was a teenager, been interested in beauty products. I think ultimately I went to school to be an elementary school teacher. I have a California teaching credential and a master's in education. I love teaching. I love children. Um, But when I started my career, I was actually working at the same school as my sister and she's just brilliant. And she's a teacher as well. And she was so passionate about what she was doing. And I realized a couple years in that I wasn't as passionate about that as, as she was. And my mom was so sweet. She was like, you should be in the beauty industry. This is what you love. And, and she was right. And at the time I was living in San Francisco and I was walking distance from the Bear Essentials corporate headquarters. So Bear Essentials owned um, and created the Bear Minerals and the Buxom brand. So um, one summer when I was not working uh, as a teacher, I got an entry level job there and the rest is history. I never went back to being a teacher. <laughs> I started at the bottom and I worked my way up and I loved learning everything about the beauty industry. I love the people I worked with and ultimately that experience uh, propelled me into starting my own business of consulting with beauty brands and I really work with beauty brands on um, their setup 
to work with retailers. So their product development and production side, but also merchandising, sales, even a little bit of marketing here and there um, to set them up to sell into big re- retailers like Ulta and Sephora. Um, and I've worked with really big brands. I've worked with um, small brands. Right now, I'm having a lot of fun working with emerging beauty brands. I loved working with Bare Essentials because they were a brand that they made you feel something. They they were making a mm-hmm. difference in the world. They were making a difference in the way that people saw the beauty industry. And that was kind of the first time we were seeing that in the industry, a brand that put real women in their marketing, that um, didn't make the young girls think that one image was what beauty is. They used all different types of images. Um, and I love the trend that we're seeing now in the beauty industry with new brands following that and really, um, changing the standard of the industry Mm -hmm. and speaking to the artistry within the industry that this is an art and there's a lot of talent there and it's a lot of fun and, uh, having a passion in that can give an individual a confidence within themselves, um, And it can materialize in lots of different ways. And as a mom now, I love uh, working in the beauty industry because I'm seeing that teaching self-care with my little girls gives them confidence in those types of routines. Um, So beauty is different at every stage in life. I've been in the industry for over 15 years and and I experience it in a different way um, as I get older. I think we were joking the other day that we're like, older millennials we we part our hair on the side yeah. not, not in the middle you called us elder you called us elder in the notes elder, oh, yeah. elder. or elderly millennials yeah <laughs> um, but, yes where you can see the way we part our hair yeah. we're not doing it down the middle not down the middle not to say i didn't try but i was like no that doesn't work <laughs> I was gonna say we tried it. You, the, we tried it down the middle way, and we, now we're back to this because it's it just looks better. It looks better for us. It does. Yeah, but yeah. Um, uh-huh. yeah, my my experience and my passion in the beauty industry is always there, but it's always growing and changing and evolving. And and I'm interested now in working with like clean beauty brands, sustainable brands, brands that are making a difference in the world that are not just mass producing a bunch of junk and marketing it to. Um, young people with a dishonest marketing. So it, it's yeah. an exciting industry to work in. And uh, not only do I work in it, but I'm super passionate about it. And as I had said before, I continued throughout my life to seek out girlfriends that are interested in it as well. So all my friends are interested in beauty. They're, you know, <laughs> estheticians and microbladers and um, just hairstylists. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun little passion and, and work psychologists yeah <laughs> and, and psychologists <laughs> yeah. yeah um oh that's so great I I love the um I love the purpose and I love the philosophy behind um what you're choosing to do in the beauty industry because I I resonate with that I think it's such a higher purpose to provide um people with products that are healthy and clean and um using diversity as um, a platform and um, not that there's any one specific image mm-hmm. that is beautiful. There are so many ways to depict beauty. So, um, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Um, I, yeah, I, I wanted to make sure, um, before we dive into questions, I want to thank all of our listeners for the participation in the question and answer, um, portion of this episode. We got some fantastic questions, um, through direct messages, through, um, Instagram messages. Um, so thank you so much to everybody who provided these questions. And as I was reading them, I was thinking to myself, oh, I actually have that question too. So I'm very (laughs) excited to dive in. Um, so actually first, before we dive into those questions, I have some rapid fires for you. Are you ready? Okay. Ready. Okay. Question one. What is your favorite beauty product of all time that you can li- not live without? 1,000% Bare Minerals Original Foundation. Best foundation ever. Also, I feel like I should note I'm not affiliated with Bare Minerals at all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just worked with them for so long and I genuinely love most of their products. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see why it's good stuff. Okay. 
Good one. Question two. What is one beauty thing women should never leave the house without? Sunscreen. I wish that I would have done this when I was in my 20s. I love the Color Science Mineral Brush-On Sunscreen. I bring it everywhere and I brush it on whenever I feel like I need a touch-up of sunscreen. And it's a really nice matting powder as well. So it absorbs oil or if you're in the sun or anything. I use it on my kids too. I have to say, um, it's a good texture. Like Mm -hmm. I, my family is a family of like, they cry when I put sunscreen on their faces and stuff like that. They just, my kids don't like the feeling of lotion. Um, and this is a nice alternative because it's a powder instead. They don't seem to mind as much, which is great. Um, okay. Question three, what is your favorite beauty brand of all time? Bare Minerals. <laughs> However, um, my, <laughs> my new love is uh, House Labs, which is the brand that um, Lady Gaga created. And it's a clean brand as well. And they have some really fun pigments. It's more of an artistry brand. Oh, cool. Um, okay. And here's a bonus question. What is your favorite skincare line of all time? Um, hands down, SkinCeuticals. It's a medical grade skincare line. I I'm obsessed with their CE Frilic. Um, I did double check on the EWG app and it's a one with regards to toxins. So that's great. One is good. And then I love their daily brightening UV defense sunscreen as like a thicker barrier sunscreen. And that's a two. So that's great. Um, So that's my, yeah, absolutely favorite skincare line. When I was pregnant, my favorite line to use was Lyra. And that's a to- uh, mostly clean skincare brand that is um, comparable. That's great. I, I separately also use all this, a lot of the Skin Scoot Cuticles um, products, and I looked them up on EWG, and um, most of them are ones, which made me very yeah. happy because I thought that there were going to be so many chemicals in there because it was medical grade, and there weren't, which was great. I know. I was pleasantly um, surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was too. Okay. Now we can get to the questions from all of our audience. Um, okay. So the first question we have is about makeup. Um, how often should I clean my makeup brushes and Mm -hmm. what cleaner do you recommend and how do I do it? Um, okay. Good question. I think that a public service announcement is no one is cleaning their brushes as often as they should. (laughs) Um, I think technically you're supposed to be cleaning them once a week. Personally, I'm trying to do it every other week and I'll give it to my daughters and I'll, I'll let them do it. Um, they're six and three, so it's fun for them to do, but, but it is hard to remember to do that. If you're using a lot of liquid products like liquid foundation or cream concealer, I would try to do it once a week. Um, but as far as how to do it and what cleaner I use, um, Dr. Bronner's, the pure cast style soap. Um, I don't know. Do you use that for stuff? I love that soap. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, is it specific to um, washing makeup brushes or can you use it for other things? No, my husband uses it in the shower for like his body wash. It's oh. it's a cast style soap, so it's totally clean okay. and they have different scents. I just get the original, which is peppermint, I think, and it comes in these big jugs and you can use it for all different kinds of things. Um, so I use that for my makeup brushes. It works really well. It's a clean, uh, a a clean soap. So I know there's nothing being added into it. And, um, I just set up the bathroom sink and fill it with some soap and warm water. And I let my daughters kind of rub the brushes around and we clean them off and rinse them. And then When you're letting them dry, just kind of hang the head of the brush over the bathroom counter so there's airflow so it doesn't alter the shape of the brush, Um, and they should be good to go the next day. But this is a good reminder for me to- embarrassing- (laughs) What? Oh, no. (laughs) Do you not not wash your brushes, Megan? I never have. Oh, (laughs) no. What? (laughs) I have never- (laughs) I know. I know I should. Oh what God. I do is I throw them away. I know. I, oh, I didn't, I've no. never known how to do it. So <laughs> I know. Oh, God. I'm glad somebody asked this because I needed this um, answer. Okay, okay. So good. So we should be doing it once a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, it's so sounds funny. pretty easy to do. 
It's yeah, and it's fun. <laughs> if you have kids, let them do it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We can do that. I'll follow up with you tomorrow and make sure those brushes are getting washed. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Check in. Check in. Um, Okay. Good, good peer pressure. Um, All right. (laughs) What are your favorite makeup brushes and why do some shed more than others? Okay. Oh, good question. Okay. So makeup brushes either come, um, made with animal hair, like goat hair usually is used, or synthetic. Um, And with regards to either of those, if it's shedding, it's because it's cheaply made and get rid of it. It's not a good brush if it's shedding. Um, Or it was a good brush and you've just used it too much and maybe you washed it too much and it got damp and wet and then it's shedding, so then throw it away. You need a new one. Um, Okay. For me personally, I... I only use synthetic brushes uh, just because I would – there's a good alternative. If there's a good alternative, I'd rather not purchase a product made with animal hair. That's just a personal preference. Um, And there's a lot of great brushes that are made ethically with synthetic fibers. So some of my favorite ones – Urban Decay uses recycled materials, so that's pretty cool. I have some of their eyeshadow brushes. Uh, the Sephora Collection brushes, those ones are great. They're synthetic, super soft, super, super soft, um, and a great mm. price price point. Um, for foundation, my two favorite brushes are Tatcha has the powder brush, which is like really fluffy and soft and just it picks up that loose foundation really well. And then recently I received as a gift the Hourglass Retractable Foundation Brush. And this brush is PETA approved, which I love that. Um, And and it's great too. So I've been using that one for foundation as well some days. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, lots of good options out there. So I guess it it mostly depends on what's important to you. Okay. Is, um, Is makeup brush hair ethical? Well, I think that uh, similar to the hair, as we spoke about with hair extensions, the industry is not regulated as well as it should be. So um, when a brush says that it's cruelty-free, it doesn't mean that it's synthetic. It just means that wherever the hairs are coming from, if it's a goat farm, they have somehow established they're cruelty-free. Whether or not that's, you know, been determined or, or is fair to say, I think is not regulated. So it's a little up in the air, which is why mm. I pers- personally choose to just buy synthetic ones because I think they're just as good. However, I have some great friends who are really talented makeup artists, and I think they would never use synthetic brushes because they really believe that the goat hair brushes um, are able to they're able to perform their artistry better using those. Mm. Um, so ethical, if it says cruelty free, that's a better that's a better choice. Um, but you know, nothing's nothing's a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> and for those of us who aren't makeup artists, it's probably easy just to choose yeah. a synthetic for for most days. Yeah, um, I agree. Okay, okay, <clears throat> um, okay. My eight year old daughter wants to wear makeup. What should I do? Oh, uh, I love this question. Um, yeah, I do too. <laughs> I mm-hmm. love this question because my six-year-old daughter loves to wear makeup um, and she loves to, she's very artistic and she loves to play with makeup. She loves to do face paint. Um, so it's a, definitely a personal preference, but for me, um, I would say yes. Yes for boys. Yes for girls. It is artistic expression. It is them seeing something that you're doing on the daily and wanting to emulate it in their own unique way. Um, I would let them use any of my clean makeup that I'm not currently using daily. I would buy, uh, I have bought non-toxic face paints. Those are really fun and kind of a good start. Um, I would advise like keeping that age uh, away from YouTube tutorials. I think makeup tutorials in general are really dangerous for children and teenagers for a few reasons. One, it's stifling their own creativity. So rather than coming up with their own artistic expression, they may be just trying to copy what somebody else is doing. 
And then also there's the comparison factor. So they may be seeing um, someone on the YouTube that looks one way and and they look another way. And so there's that comparison um, rather than self-acceptance. But I think any type of Mm. artistic expression that your child wants to do, let them do it. Um, We have a rule in our house that my daughter's in kindergarten that she can't wear it to school, but she can wear it any other time. And she's out with her dad right now and she's got blush and eyeshadow and eyeliner on and she's got a cat nose and cat whiskers and you know I think it gives I think it gives self-confidence but make sure you're giving them clean products those Amazon kids makeup kits they are crap do not don't buy those they're awful maybe we could do some digging and find some clean options for kids to to play with or yeah find some something we can recommend for, for them to play with. Because I know we let them play with the some of the buxom stuff because we know that it's clean, but that's yeah. not. The, and bare minerals. Right, and bare minerals, right. Um, so maybe maybe we can look and see if we can find something. Yeah, there is a brand Petite and Pretty. Um, they're sold at Ulta, and they have oh. some non-toxic makeup palettes for kids. I have a surplus of bare minerals, so I just end up making little makeup kits for the girls in my life. But um Oh, yeah. my kids love it oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah I do too um yeah that's awesome and I'm glad you brought up the face paint because I think that's another way for them to have that self-expression um besides makeup where they can make themselves look like a tiger or um I know one of your girls likes to be a kitty cat um so that's that's a good way for them to do that as well um yes. so we should definitely provide a link to that as well on our store so we will. Um, note to self. Um, okay. I love this next question, and it's one I've asked you, I feel like, many times. How do you organize your makeup? Oh. Can you put a picture on Instagram? <laughs> oh, the pressure. <laughs> I know. Uh, um, yes, I will. I um love being super organized in most areas of my life. So makeup is no exception. (laughs) Um, I do keep like my daily makeup separate and then like extra fun makeup in my makeup closet. Um, But I have a a medicine cabinet in my bathroom. Um, It's travel. I I bought it years ago when I was first in the industry and it's traveled from house to house with me but um it has like four or five shelves and it's just a mirrored uh medicine cabinet and within that I have each shelf as a different category so the top shelf is all skincare and the next shelf is foundation and concealer and bronzers and um highlighters (laughs) and then the next shelf is uh eyeshadows and there's quite a few, so that takes up a whole shelf. <laughs> ah. and, and then in the below, I have little jars that have like eyebrow pencils, eyeliners, and then a jar with mascaras and a jar with lip liners. Oh, above that is a, is a shelf for lipsticks because there's quite a few of those as well. But um, I think it's easy to organize your makeup by categories and then having it in a medicine cabinet is just so clean and um, easy to find and I do my makeup in the morning in like 10 minutes because it's just easy to grab. And and they're in order of how I put them on my face from top to bottom. (laughs) Is that too extra? I feel like we're going to need to know. But what we we need to do is show a picture of how I keep my makeup and how you keep your makeup side by side. Because mine's all just thrown into a drawer. It's not separated, nothing. I mean, it's a disaster. I know, I can't find anything. I'm trying to think of this medicine cabinet you have because I have, like, the mirror on the wall that's, like, my medicine cabinet, but it's filled up with, like, all my skincare stuff. Okay. So I'm trying to think of – Yeah, I want to see what this is. You haven't seen it? I'm not sure. It's just a big, like – No, I'm not sure. Okay. Well, the way you keep your makeup does not align with your personality. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I know. I need to do better. This is one area where I'm like, I look at it and it just drives me crazy, but then I don't ever fix it. It's one of those procrastination things. So I'm like, I don't know what to do to fix it. So I'm just throwing it all in. I know usually I I like to have a very clean house with with nothing out. This is one exception where it's like, I just throw everything. I need to do better with it. Well, when things get to be too overwhelming, you kind of just pass them off, right? You're like, I'm not going to touch that. It's too overwhelming. Um, 
I'll, I'll put a picture up and then I'll, yes. I'll come to your bathroom and I'll help you take care of that situation. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We can document it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh. Um, you can see the mess. Okay. Um, yes, I would love some help. Um, okay. I like this question. It's, um, it's a good one. I don't even know how to con- contour, but somebody asked, what are the best clean contouring products? Okay. Yeah. I, that's what a do great, you think? it's a great question. Um, mm. I, I don't contour that much either. Um, it, contouring is when you're using darker and lighter shades of makeup to uh, artistically change the visuals of your face. So you might be using it uh, strategically on your nose to make your nose appear leaner or on your cheekbones to make them appear higher. Um, Some of my makeup artist friends are so talented at this. Um, They can really change the shape of a face. It's amazing. I think for where I'm at in my life as a mom, just in the day to day, I'm I'm not doing this, but there are some great clean brands that provide products. I um, I was gifted the Milk Makeup uh, Contour Stick, so that's a really great product, um, especially for cheekbones. Mm. And then I was also gifted the um, the G- Give, which is Gwen Stefani's brand. That's a clean brand. It's fairly new. They have a talc free. Uh, it's a powder and cream duo set. Um, so that's nice because it comes with the darker oh. and the lighter shade and you can play with both of those. And then years ago when I was wearing a little bit more makeup on the day to day, I loved Bare Minerals has um, a loose powder called Warmth, which is a bronzer. And you can really uh, use that to kind of make a three from the top of your forehead down your cheekbone and then down to your jawline and that can be like a very subtle way to contour and I love that product so if you're interested in contouring but you're a novice you can get that product and then start at the top of your forehead and just draw a three and then it kind of hits the do you go under the cheekbone Right at the top of the cheekbone. So you t- oh, at the start top. At, yeah. Okay. And then dit, and then right at your jawline. And that kind of hits the spots um, that the darker pigment should sit on to uh, contour your face. Oh, that's so cool. I, I think I have that. I have a bronzer from Bare Minerals that I use every day. Um, but I have never heard the three before. That's oh, easy. Try it. That makes it easy. easy. Yeah, so I'll easy. try that. Okay. Oh, that's cool. When you're talking about contouring, are you talking about the light and the dark shades yeah. or is it, is it just, okay, it's using both to it's make It's using the, both. So the, the idea of, con- yeah, the idea of contouring is you're using shading, kind of the way an artist would shade a pencil drawing. You're using that type of shading yeah. within your face using dark and light, um, diff- darker and lighter than your original skin shade to play up and play down certain features. I've heard the one of putting like a line down your nose of whiteness. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you wanna make it look a little long, like your nose look longer. Yeah. Um, I've heard that one before. Yeah. yeah. Cool, okay, good advice. Thank you, Sarah. Um, okay, here is a, oh, I resonate with this question. I get overwhelmed walking into an Ulta or Sephora how do I best update my makeup routine with there being so many options? That's oh, a hard one. I totally, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I I think I, yeah, I'm asked this question often, I think actually by girlfriends or just people in my life um, that they want to update their ru- makeup routine, but the market is so saturated. There's so many products. There's so many, so many brands. So it's like, where do you even mm-hmm. start? Um, I think it's great that this person said they get overwhelmed walking into the store. I think with makeup, it's so important to go into a store if you're wanting to revamp, um, to try products on your hand and to get the shades that you really want. It's hard to shop online for new products unless it's just like a color mm. pop, pop here and there. Um, 
So I think for this individual, I would say re research ahead of time what's important to you. So do you want only clean products? Are you open to other types? Um, <clears throat> are you looking for a more artistry brand, like you want strong pigments? Or do you want a more natural brand and um, coverage and price point? There's mass brands and there's prestige brands. Um, so if you kind of, whether you're doing on Instagram or online, finding some brands that you think align with what you're looking for, then when you go in, you can go straight to those gondolas. You can go straight to the gondola of the brand you've been thinking about um, and researching. I think if you're a mom, go alone. <laughs> so That's hard a to good bring. Point. <laughs> it's hard to bring your kids yeah. into those stores. Um, and go when you have a little bit of time so that you can take your time and play in the store. I like to just go by myself and stand at a gondola and like shade swatch on my hand all the different colors and and take your time it makeup should be fun if it's not fun for you mm -hmm. then <clears throat> change up what you're doing um because it's fun it's creative expression one more thing sure. ulta just launched in uh some targets so if you're already shopping at target you can check out if that Target has a Ulta Inside Target. And that is really amazing. Um, they've done a really good job with laying out the products. They've kind of taken the pick of the litter of their brands and assortment, and they've plopped them into this Target space. Um, so if the full-size store just feels like too much, check that out when you're at Target because it's a condensed, smaller space. I just bought this at the Target um, Ulta, and it's the it's one of the Buxom um, lip pencils. Oh, and I, yeah. I was shocked that this was in the store. I was like, wait, this is in Target? Um, but it was, and it's the um, Rich Rose. I have it on right now. I love it. Oh, it looks so pretty. So, I love yeah. it. Thank you. Thanks. I was going to ask you, the follow-up I have is, where do you find yourself gravitating towards? Like, what uh, gondolas do you tend to find yourself in? You, like which ones pull you in? Where do you spend your most time? Like what, yeah. what brands? Well, for me, um, I'm interested right now. I'm really interested in House Labs. They're putting out a lot of innovation. So I go and look there for lipstick or eyeshadow. Ilia is a brand that's mm. fairly new that's clean, and I'm excited to learn about their stuff. Um, the Give by Gwen Stefani, that's at Sephora right now. I like looking at what stuff they're picking out. But sometimes, too, um, I'll, I mean, I'll always go back to Bare Minerals. I'll go back to Buxom and see what they're putting out. Um, but I also mm -hmm. just like to take my time and looking. There's so many new brands on the market right now. So going in and just looking at um, maybe there's something there that I haven't seen. Like Tower 28 just launched, and they have some great stuff, um, and they're a totally clean brand, and I just checked out some of their stuff in store. So yeah, I think the most oh, cool. important part is to have fun with it. I agree. Okay, that's, yeah, good advice there. Um, <laughs> now you're making me want to go shopping. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go shopping. I know yeah. I need to go find myself in a Sephora soon. Okay. Um, okay, so next question. Oh, what are the benefits of using a liquid eyeliner versus hard pencil or a soft pencil? Oh, okay. This is, this a, is good a good one. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just a different mm -hmm. look. I used a lot of hard pencil and soft pencil when I was younger. I pretty much never use them anymore because I think that they tend to make the eye look smaller because it gives more of that smudgy, smoky look. I love just like mm -hmm. one swipe of a liquid liner across the top of my lid. That's my look. Um but um, it's just a different look. So it's a lot of personal preference. Um, my favorite clean beauty liquid liner right now, though, is by Freck Beauty. Um, so it's the Lash Rocket mm. liquid liner. It goes on really well, and it stays all day. Um, but, yeah, I do, like, a little winged liner for, like, going out or date nights, things like that. It's not an everyday look for me personally, but, um, 
It, it looks mm-hmm. so it looks so cute on some people who do it all the time. I think a hard pencil look when you're an elder millennial. <laughs> I think that a, hard, <laughs> a hard pencil can make can make you look a little bit older. I I would just stay away from that unless you're doing a smoky eye. <laughs> and and the application of a hard and a soft pencil where so would you did you smudge those into the eyelash is that generally how they're applied rather than like a liquid eyeliner goes like right across your lid right the liquid eyeliner goes right across the top and then I mean a hard liner a hard pencil or a soft pencil you could do it um along the top of your lid on the bottom you know some people do it in the waterline I read an article a few years ago about how bad that is for you so I like really I'm against ever putting it in your waterline. It also just can irritate your eyes and it doesn't tend to stay. So if you're wanting to have that for just like a couple photos or you're doing a photo shoot or something and you want that look, but as far as like wearing eyeliner in your waterline on the daily or to an event, um, it's, I would just stay away from that. (laughs) Oh, interesting. I think that's what I do. I put it on the inside (laughs) of my bottom line. Yeah. That's your I didn't know line? that was bad for you. And I, that's where I, cause I have hooded eyes. So like I have a hard time with the liquid liner cause I feel like it closes my eyes. Although you said it seemed like it opened them, you thought, but I, I have, so. you know, a hooded eye. So I just, I tend to put it on the bottom cause I figure you can see that, um, <laughs> but that's interesting. I think yeah. your eyes look so pretty with just a wing, a liquid liner, oh. a little wing on the top. That's my favorite on you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. And then can you clarify for us when we're looking at color, can people look at color when it comes to eyeliner? Is that in right now? Or is that, or is it just black and brown? Like what, what no, should people do? Yeah. I mean, I think it's in, I think anything you like can be in. Um, I have this massive eyeliner set that I got as a gift years ago from Urban Decay and it has literally like 100 colors of eyeliner and there's oh. it's so fun to play with those I mean I don't know if they're in or not but if you are going out or something you want to do like a little hint of blue that's kind of fun um gosh I remember when I was in high school white eyeliner was in we used to put white eyeliner on did you do that <laughs> I did on top yeah. of my eye yeah. yeah I know yeah I know um but yeah there's a lot of fun colors out there I think fun makeup and fun colors go with fun events or fun days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, Let's see. Where are we? Okay. Next question. What are the different brands you recommend for tinted moisturizers? Is that a good alternative to foundation? Um, Okay. So... Tinted moisturizer can definitely be an alternative to like a light foundation. Um, I would say even better than tinted moisturizer is a tinted sunscreen. Um, that a tinted moisturizer, I guess maybe they're referring to a moisturizer that just gives a little bit of glow, mm-hmm. which is fine. But during the day, we want to have products on that are protecting our skin. So I would look for a tinted sunscreen and that could be an alternative to foundation or it could be a base layer for foundation so I use the Alistin Hydra Tint uh, tinted sunscreen first on my face and then I put on loose bare minerals uh, foundation so I love that one Um, bare minerals also has their own called complexion rescue that it's an SPF and and you could try that as well Um, and then I did recently try the Beauty Counter. They have one called Dew Skin, and that's really pretty as well. So I think that um, wearing mm. a, t- a tinted sunscreen, if you're kind of a no makeup kind of person, or you don't want to, um, you don't want to waste any time with that, just wearing a tinted sunscreen every day can um, bump up your look a little bit and add and add the needed protection. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. Um, what I'm thinking right now about what I'm using. I, I have used um, SkinCeuticals, the tinted sunscreen that they have. Have you tried that before? Yeah, that one's great too. I just switched. That was a good I, one? Okay. Yeah, that one's great. Um, and that, that one's similar to Revisions also has a really great one. Um, these are all the ones we're speaking to, SkinCeuticals, Revision, and Alliston. Those are medical grade 
skincare lines that have a tinted SPF. Um, so I do yeah. tend to choose those. But whereas the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue and the Beauty Counter Dew Skin, those are makeup lines that have added in some mineral sunscreen. So it kind of just depends on what level of protection you want mm. um, and, and, mm -hmm. what, and what consistency works best with your skin. Um, some of them are a little bit too thin for my skin. I want something maybe a little bit thicker with a little bit more tint to it. Um, yes. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. A little bit more coverage. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You're using a good one though. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. I don't use it all the time. I use the other, like the skincare line, the other bare minerals, not bare minerals, um, SkinCeuticals one that's just the UV, I think it's like SPF 25. I use that and that's a clear one, but I do like the tinted one if I'm going out. It's like a little bit heavier and, and it does sort of look like foundation. So yeah, um, it looks, I don't know, it works pretty good. Um, okay, cool. Good advice. Our next question. Um, okay, yes. This is a broad, broad umbrella of questions about mascara. Um, we got a <laughs> lot of questions about mascara. Um, first, what mascara do you recommend? Mascaras, uh, I love mascara. <laughs> um, as far as which ones I recommend, uh, everybody's eyelashes are so different. So it's hard to recommend one for a specific individual without knowing what type of eyelashes they have. But, um, yeah, the, so the, it went on to say, no matter how many layers I put on, my lashes never stand out. So maybe that Oh, Does okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe they have thin or blonde lashes. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I have similar lashes to that, so I can speak to that for sure. I, uh, it's not a clean product, um, but I do, I love the Pat McGrath Fetish Eyes Mascara. It's so good. <laughs> Did you buy I have it? it on right now? I know. Yes. You told me, me to too. buy it, so I did. I and I, I was like, well, I'm going to be on screen, so I'll put this on today. I know. Um, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. It makes your eyes pop. It is it is not a clean product, so I don't <laughs> wear it on the daily, but whenever I'm going to be doing photos or um, going out or anything like that, this is my go-to. It just is so such a beautiful consistency, and it doesn't clump. Um, mm -hmm. although you, if you put too much on with any mascara, you can get it to clump. So, so be careful not yeah. layering too much on. Um, okay. But with regard, so that's my favorite kind of, uh, indulgent mascara, I suppose. As far as like day-to-day mm -hmm. -day mascara, um, I, I do love the Bare Minerals mascara, but I have two new favorites. Um, I was gifted the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. And that's new and that's a clean brand. So that was really nice. Um, not the same impact that the Pat McGrath has, but definitely a great day-to-day -day option. And then okay. I bought, um, when I was on my last little shopping spree, I bought the Tower 28 mascara and it's so cute. It's called Make Waves and it's a curl mascara. And it works great. My lashes don't typically curl very well, and they were pretty curly with that. So I love that one too. I, wow. I feel like that might be a good day-to-day -day one. Um, yeah, both of them are great. Okay. And what about best affordable mascara? Best affordable mascara? Um, gosh, I don't know the price points off the top of my head. Not the Pat McGrath one. That's definitely a a pricier line. Um, okay. Yeah. I think that Ilia and Tower 28, they're both prestige brands, but they're not, um, they're not too crazy on the price points. Yeah. I also tried the Buxom mascara cause you recommended oh, yeah. that a while ago. And I don't think that price point was too high either. That no, seems pretty reasonable. It's like 20, yeah. 20 something, I think. Um, although in our recent research for the podcast and the work that we're doing, I did learn to stay away from waterproof mascara, which I did like. Oh no. I know. Why? I, um, it has some chemicals in it that are the waterproofing, um, has some chemicals in it that is actually what helps it be waterproof. So oh, I, there'll no. have to be more to come on that, but I don't have a great waterproof mascara recommendation right now. I need to do some more research. 
Okay. Sorry, um, ladies of the South. We know you need your, your <laughs> <laughs> waterproof mascara. I remember the days. Uh, yeah. We will find one for you. Yes, <laughs> we'll, that is we'll find clean. one. I'm on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Yay. Um, okay. Good advice. What? Oh, I had never heard this before, but somebody asked, does red lipstick cause cancer? And is there a website I can look at that will tell me which brands have toxic ing ingredients? Oh, yay. We already spoke to this. So the EWG yes. website, um, I'm so happy it exists. And, and it's actually, it's the app. So when you go onto their website, um, they have a lot of information, but go into your app store and just download the EWG app to your phone. And it's so easy. And that's how you get all the information in. Um, so there oh, is, that's great advice. I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, did you not did do that yet? The, oh, I've been, oh. I haven't, I've been doing, I've been looking it up on Google because I can't figure out how to get to the EWG, in, like the actual place to look up the products on the website unless I go to Google and I say EWG Buxom Mascara, EWG whatever. And I look it up and then it comes up with a webpage and then I click on that and it tells me the rating. Oh yeah, so just I didn't get the know app. this other way existed. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay, all oh, right, we're gonna we're gonna know. reorganize doing it the hard way. <laughs> we're gonna reorganize your makeup, and we're yeah. gonna get you the EWG app. <laughs> yes, yeah. we're gonna be set yeah. up. Okay, it, it's awesome. great. Um, I think that there there was a there was information out there years ago about the toxins in color and pigment, um, specifically red, and. Oh. What I would say about this is there are chemicals in cosmetics that are linked to cancer, but it's not strictly red. It's in all colors. So if that's something that you're concerned about, I would look for a clean brand. Um, if you have a red lipstick that you absolutely love and you put it into the EWG app and it mm -hmm. has a toxin level of 8, 9, or 10, Take that red lipstick into Ulta and, and go to the clean gondolas, go to Ilia, go to Bare Minerals or, you know, wherever house labs and that's in Sephora and, um, see if you can find a comparable color. There's so many great options out there. Yeah. Good advice to try and just do some color matching in the store. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, okay, cool. So. Moving on to a little bit about the toxins, um, what are the three top ingredients to avoid for adverse reactions in makeup? Uh, top ingredients. Well, you know, going back to our clean beauty episode, um, the in mm. ingredients are tricky because they're not always, it's not going to say phthalates in the ingredient list. Right. It's going to say That's a non- it's hard. It's so hard. It's going to say a nonsensical word. Um, so if you're looking at a product, um, if you're shopping off our Amazon site that's going to be up soon, you know that we've already looked at the products, so you don't have to worry. We've looked at the ingredients in the products. You don't have to worry about it. But um, right. if you're looking at the ingredients, I think it's fair to know that if it has any type of fragrance, just if, if you um, are – easily get an adverse reaction, you're very sensitive, or you just want to stay away from um, any toxins. If there's any fragrance in the product, uh, avoid it. You don't need fragrance in your makeup. You know, there was a brand years ago that all their blushes and bronzers and eyeshadow was smelling like different treats, like cupcakes and cakes, and that's so unnecessary, and it's just... Oh, yeah, um, that's... <laughs> It's just um, unnecessary toxins, and you, we don't need our makeup to smell. That's not needed. Um, so if there's any fragrance, avoid it. Also, with regards to mascara and eyeliner um, specifically, mm. if there's any coal tar dyes. So coal tar dye is what makes black products black. Um, if they're not clean and they're going to be shown in the ingredients as CI followed by a five digit number. So if you see CI and then five numbers, that means that it's using the tar dye versus a more natural or uh, a mineral to create that black. So I would stay away from that. Mm. Um, 
And then another one would be formaldehyde releasing preservatives. And this one, um, it's pretty easy to spot. If it ever says formaldehyde, don't buy it. And I recently threw out a bunch of eyelash glue because I was gifted it. And I thought, oh, so great. I love wearing fake eyelashes. And sure enough, it had formaldehyde releasing preservatives in the eyelash glue. And you're putting that on your eyelid. So, yeah. um, I'm sure. So three. Those are the three I would stay away from. Okay. Yeah, good Good um, to hearken back to that episode. We had talked about like anything that says perfume or fragrance is code word for phthalates. So yes. <laughs> that's a, a big one. It's easy to see too. It's on a lot of products. So um, I know. I had no idea though about the coal tar or formaldehyde. I would not imagine they'd put that in products right now. Oh my gosh. I know. Um, in this and that's day like and age. What they embalm crazy. bodies with. It's shocking. Ugh. I know. Yeah. Okay. So we'll stay away from those. Um, (laughs) Okay. Next question. I am a busy mom. I want to wear makeup and look put together, but I don't because it seems overwhelming. Do you have any tips? Oh, I feel like women say this to me all the time. Um, And I get that. Like wanting, like being interested in something that's not your passion or being interested in, in something that you see yeah. other women doing, but maybe you don't know where to get started. And if you're in your 30s or 40s, maybe it's a little intimidating. Um, mm-hmm. For tips, um, I think like I had said before, like the tinted sunscreen, that's a really great start because that'll give you a nice glow and it's also protecting our, our skin. Um, I would start with that. And then I would put mm-hmm. some Bare Minerals Loose Powder Foundation over because that's really easy just to uh, pop that on over. And that has um, mineral sunscreen in it as well. So you're getting an extra dose of sunscreen. And then just mm. add, if you're wanting a polished look that's really simple, just like a little bit of mascara, an eyebrow pencil, and some lip balm or lip gloss. Um, I love the Lawless brand. I think that can do like a, be a really quick polished look. But she said um, she wants to look look put together, but it seems overwhelming. So I think if you're wanting this, then, then go for it. If, if you're not wanting it, but you feel like you're noticing other people are, are wearing makeup, but it's not for you, don't go for it. Like only wear makeup if you enjoy it for yourself. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. You want to look pretty for yourself and if you feel pretty without the makeup then that's great just yeah. do you you know like there's yeah. no judgment there just wear um, sunscreen yeah, no a, matter what <laughs> that's a good point i i remember feeling back in the day very overwhelmed with where to start also and um aside from having now a best friend who's in beauty who can advise me <laughs> The next best thing, and that's hard to get. I mean, I I hit the jackpot. Um, But the next best thing, (laughs) I know, (laughs) it's wonderful, Um, is there are people who work at Sephora and Ulta um, who can advise you. And there's even beauty counters like in department stores. And so I would go to those sometimes and just ask them like, how do I do this or what do you recommend for this? And this was before I knew about clean beauty. So I just would go up anywhere and do this. Now I would try to look for like bare minerals or I'd look for Buxom or Ilia, like you mentioned and, and start there and say like, how do you do a face with all of this stuff? Show me how. Yeah. And then the people that work there can give you that advice. Yeah, that's a great point because also um, sometimes you can ask your local Ulta or Sephora if they're having any brand events. So on the on the day day to day, there are Ulta and Sephora employees who can help. Um, But brands will do branded events in the stores, and that's when you get an actual brand artist, and um, they'll be in store doing looks and stuff it's so fun yeah so if you have a brand that you're really interested in you can ask your local Ulta or Sephora if they're going to have an event or even just put in a a request or an interest for an event because brands are figuring out where they're going to 
uh, host events. You can even let them know on their Instagram, like you'd like to have an event at your local Ulta or Sephora and you'll bring five of your girlfriends. They're going to be more inclined to pick that store as one of their event stores. And those are really fun to go to. And they usually give out free gifts and things like that too. That's such good advice. And I think the good thing too is like as soon as you have the things and you know the order to put them on, it's sort of like a recipe. And then you, and then you can reorder online. You don't have to uh, go into store all the time. Oh, true. Right. Unless you want to go experiment. Yeah. Like we do. <laughs> Um, that sounds like, that sounds like fun to me, but I, I would go in with you. That would be like the thing I would do. Otherwise I would feel the same way. Very overwhelmed by all of it. Um, okay. And then, um, let's see, I want to say we might've covered this, but just to make sure the best non-toxic foundations you recommend are which ones? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, we kind of spoke to that, but I love for myself, I do bare minerals, loose foundation, um, and then house labs for like a, a more artistry look. They have a nice foundation as well. Oh, you're making me excited about that brand. I haven't tried anything from them yet. I oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. Stuff. Yeah. No, the house brands. I need to go see, see about that. Okay. Um, okay. We got a lot of questions on the under eye area also. Um, so I'm very excited mm. to hear your recommendations because I really didn't know the answers. Um, what is the best under eye routine for my permanent dark circles? Yeah, these are these are great questions. I think that um, you know, as we age, the skin underneath your eye is so delicate. So that's kind of the first indication of age. Genetics plays a big part into this. Um, it's really it's the muscle that's underneath that loose skin under your eye, the very sensitive thin skin. It starts to sag, and that's where you see that kind of droop. Um, if you're talking about the upper eyelid um, above your eye, that can get kind of puffy as well, just from age and genetics. So you have a predisposition for it. The first thing I would recommend is internal, not external. So um, you can affect mm. genetic traits by changing a few things. So changing your diet, um, salt, and anything with like excess sodium is going to cause puffiness in your face more so than um, a cleaner diet. So looking mm. at if you're um, indulging in too many um, foods that are full of sodium, hydration, so making sure that you're really hydrated, you're having lots of water, and then movement, exercise um, can drain puffiness um, anywhere on your body, really. So just keeping your body moving. Mm, and then, point. yeah, sleep position plays into this as well. And so if you are sleeping on a flat pillow, you could add a couple more pillows. Um, so there's a couple different types of puffiness and bags around your eyes. If you're noticing it when you wake up one morning and it's new, and then by the end of the day, it goes away, then these things will help. The changing the diet, the hydration, the movement, and the sleep. If it's constant and it's been there for a really long time, then these things may help a little bit, but it's not going to remove it completely. So in that case, you might want to look at covering it up. Um, so a cream-based eye cream. Um, I use two eye creams myself. Um, so having really good medical grade eye cream can help. And then having a cream-based concealer. I like the Bare Minerals one. Mm. And a cream mm -hmm. foundation. And when you're doing your makeup around your eyes, you want it to be your concealer to be one to two shades lighter than the rest of your skin. Just in general okay. with founda foundation, always err on the side of too light versus too dark. And then you can put some color back in with blush and bronzers. But you want to put on that cream concealer in a lighter shade on top of those with your finger. I wouldn't use a brush. I would just use your finger to kind of dab it on um, and that can help okay. cover it. Um, oh, also there's some really great natural brands out there that do eye masks. 
Um, so you could try out an eye mask. Um, I have a note from somewhere. Let me see. I had a picture. Ah, it's called The Good Trade. Um, it's a natural and organic eye patch that goes underneath your eyes and that can help reduce swelling. Also, this sounds crazy, but if you I'm keep your eye down, oh, I'll put it on Instagram. I'll put it on Instagram. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, please do. Okay. Yeah. Then I don't okay. have to write it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if okay. you um, put, put your eye cream in the refrigerator, that helps reduce inflammation. So it keeps it um, cold and putting ice packs, eye masks, cold cream on your eyes that'll help you know um i don't know if your mom or grandma um like put a cold spoon or put a metal spoon in the freezer and then put it on her eyes but that actually works <laughs> oh wow so you could put a metal spoon in your freezer it could be your eye spoon <laughs> and then when you wake up in the morning if you have uh puffy eyes you just put it on each of your eyes and it reduces the the swelling also washing your face in the morning with really cold water Instead of warm water, I love to just uh, oh. use the coldest possible water to wash your face in the morning. That will reduce swelling and inflammation. So I feel like I, I'm going on and on about this because there's so many different types of swelling and bags, and I've dealt with swelling around my eyes. But if it's uh, sporadic, look at using cooling agents and look at diet and sleep and movement. If it's permanent um, – there's always surgery if it really bothers you. There's fantastic surgeons. Um, and eyelid surgery and eye, under eye surgery is actually, um, it's an in and out surgery. I have some um, women I know that have had the surgery and um, it looks great afterwards. And it, it's, it's not that invasive of a surgery. So if that's something that really bothers you, you can oh. look into that. Okay. I wouldn't think of that. That's a good idea. Um, Okay, follow up questions for all the things you just said. Um, <laughs> when you're talking about putting your eye cream in the fridge, you're talking about the the eye cream that's like your skincare eye cream, yes. not the or or are you talking about the the um, concealer? Also? Oh no, no, the skincare eye okay. cream. Okay, yeah, put it in the fridge. Okay, okay, good to yeah. know. <laughs> and then when you use your cream, like your concealer cream, well, first, okay, let me back up. The, the next question was, what concealer creams do you recommend? What, bare what did minerals. you say? You said Bare Minerals has yes. one? Yeah. That's, a, that's the one you that's use? That's my favorite okay. one. That's the one I use. Okay. Okay, good. And then do you put that on top of your eye too? No. Just in the, just underneath your eye, in the corner and underneath, um, on top of my eyelid, I use just an eyelid primer. Um, I use the bare minerals one, <laughs> um, because with natural, um, or non-toxic eyeshadows, sometimes the pigment doesn't stay on as long. So I use a eyelid primer on top of the eye for the pigment to stay. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> I love your Thank questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm like, I have so many questions. Okay. Oh, um, I love how you genu genuinely want to know. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I'm having so much fun. Um, let's see. Okay. So, oh, and I like this next one too. Um, skincare. I feel like we could ask this about makeup, but we'll ask it about skincare. And what order should I put on or use my skincare? What is the difference between daytime and nighttime products? And are certain products only for one or the other? Okay, great question. Um, so uh, with skincare, you always want to put them on thinnest to thickest. So if you're using a serum, that goes first. And then a moisturizer, okay. that would go second. And then an eye cream is thicker, that would go last. Um, so thinnest to thickest. And then, yeah, there's a big difference between daytime and nighttime products. So daytime skincare products are, uh, their goal should be to protect us from the sun and then um, like pore clogging agents like dirt or pollution, things like that, that we're going to be like in the elements during the day. So you want skincare that will protect you from that. Nighttime mm. uh, skincare should be focused on hydration. So filling your skin with moisture and then treating any concerns you may have. Um, so any type of like bleach or retinol or any type of things like that you're putting on at night because it's treating the concern while you're sleeping. 
Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, what affordable, low maintenance skincare options do you recommend for busy moms? Because SkinCeuticals is expensive. I mean, I know we love it, I but know. it's there's it got is. A, there. Are there more affordable options? There are. Yes. Yeah. Medical grade skincare is really pricey, and it's not for everyone, and it's also not necessarily for every point in your life. Like if you're treating some big concerns or your skin needs some extra TLC, then you you might want to go that route. Um, but yes, um, two clean brands that I love right now for skincare, I'm loving True Botanicals. They're amazing. Um, they actually just launched on Ulta.com, which is super exciting. Um, I love, Ooh. they have a vitamin C booster product that's great. I love their cleanser. Um, and I was shopping on Ulta.com the other day and I saw that because they just launched, if you purchase, I think it was 70 or $80 worth of their product product right now, you're getting a free four-piece sample kit. So that's a really great deal. And I love those little sample kits because they're great for travel. <laughs> Whenever you yeah, get those little... good point. Yeah. Yes. You've got your skincare, um, yeah, ready to go for your next vacation. Um, I also really love Drunk Elephant. So Drunk Elephant is a clean brand. They're at Sephora and they're at Ulta right now. They have a skincare kit that I bought and it's called the Littles and it's so cute. It's like all their little skincare items and I bought it just to try them out. Um, and so I think it's like around the $75 price point and you get to try out a bunch of their products. I do daily use their body moisturizing uh, lotion. So that's, um, that's a great one. And they have facial lotions mm. and they even have a deodorant out now. I haven't tried it yet, but um, yeah, True Botanicals and Drunk oh, Elephant. Is it clean deodorant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. okay. Um, what is the number one moisturizer that you recommend? The number one, um, what I'm using right now is Skin Better Science. They have a trio rebalancing moisture treatment. I did a lot of lasers over the winter, and so my skin was really needing something hard hitting. This is a medical grade item. Um, and then I also am using the SkinCeuticals Daily Moisture. <laughs> It's just so great. Mm -hmm. It is good stuff. I love, yeah. I love that stuff. We have some questions that we might be saving for an esthetician episode. Yeah, um, I, I saw that on Instagram. We were getting a lot of questions about retinol, which are great, yeah. que are great questions. Um, and I was so appreciative to get those questions. I, I think one of them was, I'm sensitive to retinol. What else can I use? Another one yeah. was uh, mm -hmm. any clean products to replace retinol. Um, and so we're going to have an episode with an esthetician. Um, my girlfriend's going to come on and this level of skincare exceeds my knowledge. I defer to her for anything kind of past daily skincare routines. And she sent me great information. It's a lot to unpack. So if you had one of yeah. those questions, message us on Instagram and I will send you a copy of her message because it's so detailed and we will have her on to speak to all of this. But what I can say in the meantime is she's recommending retinol products from a brand called Lyra and those are... Um, those are products that use plant stem cells. It's a brand that uses plant stem cells in their products. So it is a retinol, but it's a more natural um, version of the product. Oh, super cool. I have similar products or similar problems with retinol. So I, I'm very interested to hear what she, hear her elaborate on yeah. what to use. And I, I'm interested as use. well. We're, we're going to, to come, to come. <laughs> Okay. Okay. More to come on that yeah. in a future episode. Um, okay. So we have some, some just uh, random questions and I'll throw them at you before we're all done here. Um, what is the best tip for elevating your overall look? Okay, great. I love this question. Um, elevating your overall look first, get your eyebrows shaped <laughs> by a professional. I love eyebrow threading, but you could also do eyebrow waxing. Um, so having a nice shaped eyebrow, uh, tinted sunscreen, which we already spoke to, that is great. Um, and then if you're speaking to overall look, I love manicured nails cause I think they kind of 
uh, give a nice clean look and kind of mm -hmm. make you look pulled together even when you might not be. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. I like getting my nails done. Um, my hands are starting to look old and I'm only 37. Any tips? Oh, I feel this you on this one. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I think the top of our hands, um, you, you start, you always say you can tell somebody's age by the top of their hands. And I think lots of times we forget that they need to have skincare as well. So, um, I think my biggest tip is after I'm done putting my skincare on for every item, um, I massage the rest of it into the top of my hands. So when you're done oh. putting your serum on, rub your hands and get it on the tops of your hands where the sun hits. And same with uh, moisturizers and even eye cream. Just get all the good nutrients onto the top of your hands. And then um, okay. sun, sunscreen, of course, um, and a good hand cream. Um, and then you can even do the brush on sunscreen that we love from Color Science. You could put that on top of your hands as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah, Smart. yeah. Just protect them. Okay. okay. Good, good, good advice there. Um, what facial treatments do you recommend for fine lines, blemishes, and sun damage? Oh, I mean... I get this one because I feel like I'm always treating these things for myself. Um, so uh, definitely facials, which you still haven't had your first one mm -hmm. yet, right? <laughs> I know, I know. I've been mess I need to message you for the name of the one that the person you go to. I'll go yeah. try okay. her out. So getting a facial um, and lasers. Lasers are great. Um, and then if you're open to it, mm -hmm. Botox treats fine lines. Um, yeah, or, or go back and listen to our facial treatment episode. There was lots of good info on that in that episode. Yes, exactly. We dove into it big time on that episode, so that should answer some questions for all of that. Um, and I guess related to that, um, can you explain the Botox eyebrow lift? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. I um, Yes, I love the Botox eyebrow lift. Um, so it is just done by a really talented doctor um, who administers Botox. And they, you know, Botox is an art and it's a skill. And um, mm -hmm. she will put the Botox right underneath my eyebrow at the very top of my eyelid. And the way that it's positioned will lift your eyelid slightly um lift the eyelid versus just the eyebrow so in general botox will be placed into the forehead and lift the eyebrow but if you're aging and you're starting to see a little bit of droopy eyelids and you're wanting those raised you can ask your doctor for um, a botox eye lid lift and that um yeah i love it it really opens my eyes up and they look the more like the shape they were when I was in my 20s. <laughs> yeah. I like it for hooded eyes too because my hooded eyes tend to get heavier with Botox in my forehead. So yeah. when I ask for that eyebrow, I say eyebrow lift, but I guess you're saying it's an eyelid lift actually. Yeah. Um, I, I notice that I don't get that heaviness as much um, when I get that done. So it helps a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, this is a good one. Actually, this is one I asked you the other day, and I, did, I didn't get an answer because you were going to um, do a little research on this. What's oh. the best non-toxic dry shampoo? Okay, yes. I love this question. You asked me, and that pushed me into doing research because I have been using a very toxic dry shampoo. Um, basically, anything Mine that you're... Mine is too. I know, and I loved it. Uh, yeah. past, past tense, <laughs> because mine's been trashed. <laughs> Um, anything that's in oh, an aerosol, for you. <laughs> anything that's in an aerosol can is full of toxins because that's what's propelling it out of the can is a bunch of toxins and you're spraying that. And oh. if you have little kids, you're spraying it in your bathroom and they're playing on the floor and it's just getting into the air within your home. So, um, I love how you had said before progress, not perfection. So just very recently I've mm -hmm. gotten rid of all my aerosol products. Um, and I did a, I did a oh. test drive on a few non-toxic dry shampoos 
and the one I like the most is called Primally Pure. And it's a powder that you're kind okay. of tapping into your scalp to absorb moisture. Um, it's not quite the same as the one I was using before, but it's the best of what I've tried so far. So if anyone out there has an amazing recommendation for a non-toxic dry shampoo, let us know because I think it's uh, still an exploration and I think that this is a new interest in consumerism. So hopefully we'll be seeing some new um, really great ones on the market. Some new innovation. I yeah. tend to like the powder ones because of my the blonde hair. It sort of matches my blonde when I put yeah. the pow the white powder in. <laughs> um, so I've I've liked that. But even my powder one, even though it doesn't have any talc in it, it's I think it's cornstarch based. Um, it's still it still is like a six on the EWG. So yeah. um, I'll try this primally pure yeah. one instead and see how that works. Okay, good to know. Well, thank you, Sarah, for sharing all of your amazing knowledge with us. This is so much fun. That was so I fun. Love it. I love talking about. Let's let's do a round two. <laughs> yeah, we should. Um, and we love getting your platinum perspective on makeup and skincare. So thank you so much for all of that. Um, it was a blast. Yeah, so, it was so much fun. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you so much for submitting questions. Um, as we said, we're new on Instagram, and we were just blown away by all the questions we got, and that was really some nice support yes. to see. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and we're working on that Amazon shop. So we are going to have that out there. Um, we'll post it on Instagram pretty soon here, and we will link everything that we've mentioned. And I'll put the EWG Yay. app uh, link on Instagram as well. So um, please follow us at Platinum Perspective Podcast. Yes, please follow us on Instagram. Please rate, like, and subscribe on anywhere that you can find our podcast, including Spotify, Apple, etc. And thank yeah. you for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Bye.